As the drivers complete their preparations, down below us on the grid, one man who's no stranger to the pre-race pressure is Anthony Davidson, who joins me in the commentary box today. Great to have you with us, Ant. I'm sure you can tell us all about what goes through a driver's head before lights out. But from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as you anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you, so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and Kimi Raikkonen completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen, Hülkenberg, Massa, Grosjean, and Kevin Magnussen, Sainz, Kvyat, Fernando Alonso, and Ocon, Palmer, Perez, Stoffel van Dorn, and Marcus Ericsson, Verlein, and Lance Stroll rounds off the grid. And now, it's time to head down to the track. Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here and welcome back to another race here on F1 2017. This weekend, it's the crown jewel of Formula 1. We're here at the Monaco Grand Prix for what is a sort of recreation of the 2018 event. Now, usually I would be racing as a part of my sort of F1 2017 series where we drive as our own sort of, or my own personal driver with my own name and whatnot in the actual career mode. But unfortunately, I went and just ran that race and the recording failed. So I'm going to rerun the race here on just a regular Grand Prix as Sergei Sorotkin in the Williams F1 car. So we managed to qualify eighth in the session just before this. And I must admit, it's it's sort of hard going from the career mode to the Grand Prix mode. It's sort of the car's much better, and I wasn't quite ready for all this grip because, of course, you have, uh, well, not equal cars, but you have a much better car in the sort of other modes is what you do in career mode where you have to sort of advance through all the R&D and whatnot. But nonetheless, we're going to try and keep our nose clean through this race and get as many positions as possible. Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, I do use a full 2018 modification to this F1 2017 game, so it looks and feels just like the new year in Formula 1. We've got all the new drivers, logos, liveries and whatnot. We don't have all the new chassis themselves with, of course, that horrible halo, but it does still look and feel like the new year in Formula 1. So without any further ado, we'll jump straight into this one. So we're going to be doing a one-stop strategy, due, mainly due to the fact that it's just so hard to pass around here. So I feel like if we can get our nose out in front, and just, well, nose out in front of at least a couple of drivers here in the beginning first couple of laps, then hopefully we can jump them all in just a single stop strategy rather than having to pit twice and, and risk passing more people and putting it in the fence. So that is the strategy, and it doesn't look like any rain is scheduled. So without any further ado, we'll jump straight in and get this one off and rolling. So I've pretty much gone with the max downforce setting as you do around Monaco. I mean, there's barely any straights or anything like that. So you pretty much just put everything to the max grip. You want to get as much mechanical grip out the car here as possible because the, although you do use a lot of aero at the speeds that you're going these days in these sort of modern cars, you still rely on a lot of the mechanical stuff, especially through this section, which is the slowest section in the entire F1 calendar. Now, one thing is for sure, around here, this is my first race ever uh, in the new sort of wider cars and the new higher downforce cars with all the new F1 sort of 2017 regulations on them. So I'm still getting used to the width of the car and it's given me quite a few issues so far this weekend in practice and in qualifying and in the actual career mode race I did before where I just cannot get the spatial awareness right keep brushing barriers and getting slightly sideways. Thankfully the damage model is not quite as realistic as what it is in real life so you can get away with the odd wall brush or wall tap. 
Now, I do apologise in advance if you can hear my steering wheel in the background. I'm using the one and only G29, which is about as loud as a real-world F1 rattle gun. And around here on Monaco with full downforce, full camber, it just and full caster as well, just makes the wheel rattle r around a lot. But anyway, here we go. Time to form up and get this 2018 Monaco F1 Grand Prix off and away. Just going to wait for the rest of the field to line up. Just got to get a decent start. Unfortunately, there's not not much we can do on the start. a good start. Oh wow, someone's gone diving in. Who is that? Oh, one and only Grosjean. Makes sense. Alright, well something big must happen there on turn one because I just got absolutely drilled from the side by the Haas. And we've got a quick safety car. Wow, well, that didn't take long. Made two positions up. Man, Grosjean must have gone from bloody like ninth up to fifth. Bloody torpedo, holy crap. I don't know what happened there, but anyway. We survived it. I don't think we got any damage. Oh, there's a curb there. Save as much fuel as possible. So I probably should have mentioned before, this is a full 50% race. So it's half of what it is in real life. 39 laps is a long race around here. Definitely one of the longest races on the calendar. I think Singapore is the longest race. And I'm not sure if it's Monza or Spa is the shortest race. I believe it's Monza, I'm not can't quite remember. Gonna save as much fuel as we can and use all that rich mode to try and get a decent restart. I'll definitely go back and have a look at the replay as to what on earth happened there at the start of that one, because that was insane. This is good though, this will help us out, it just gives us an extra couple laps that means we can go on the tyres. Watch this tyre temp, don't want to let it drop too low. Oh, Jesus, that's what happens when you try and take a 60 mile an hour corner in 8th gear. Lucky we're not in anti-stall right now. Trying to save every last drop so that we can use that rich mode for as long as possible on this restart. As much as we want to make positions, we don't want to get passed from behind by Gasly. Those pit boards are so ridiculously close to the track. It's amazing, they actually have to use a different steering rack completely to turn around that left hand. I, unfortunately, I have no idea what the names are of each corner around here. I know there's Portier and Rascasse, although I don't know which one is where. <laughs> 
in the tunnel, famous tunnel. But yeah, no, there's definitely an interesting history to this track. It's changed a lot, actually, over the years. Well, actually, well, not really, but when you look at a photo of it from back in the 60s and 70s, you would be shocked. All right, safety car in this lap. Oop, wrong button. Getting mixed up with iRacing. All right, here we go. Oh, that was a horrible restart. That's why you're supposed to be right up the guy's gearbox. Shit. Cold tires. aggressive on the curbs. So slow in a straight line. I wish we had DRS up this section. No, I think if they did, it probably someone would die. <laughs> Shit. 
just don't know where the hell I'm supposed to pass this guy. Just do not have any engine power at all. Cheeky with the <laughs> curve there. No straight line speed at all. Like, look at that. That's a joke. I just want to know how the hell this Haas is so quick. It's funny, we're actually keeping up with the top sort of five or six. Well, we're keeping up with the top five, which are all sort of Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull. But this Haas somehow is quicker than all of them. I think he's got his engine mode turned up to max. I don't think we broke anything. No. It's just a slight rub. And we're just going to have to use the pit stop cycle, I think. Undercut these guys. Oh, Jesus. That was very scary. lost all braking performance. Uh, just using up so much tyre trying to get past this bloody Haas.
it's just no way through. <laughs> I just don't know where the hell I'm supposed to pass this guy. Ah, I was trying to get a good run out of there and have another go into the this corner. I mean, look at this. It's just crazy. I wish we had a DRS option through here. It's nowhere through. Oh, okay, breaks so early. I'm going to have to really dive it in there at some point. It's compromising the entire race. Oh shit. We gotta do it this lap. Uh I can't get Oh fuck, I knew that was gonna happen. Alright. <laughs> well, we got it done. Not in the finest of fashions, but we got it done.
Alright, I'm not going to pit this lap. I'm going to go the next one. Let's try and stretch a gap on Gasly. in the slab. Box this lap. In and out, in and out, in and out. Two point four eight three, not bad. Alrighty, this tie to the end. Ah, come on. Stop hitting the fence. I keep having these brain fails where I just forget how wide these cars are and revert back to the width of... Well, my brain reverts back to how wide it thinks the old cars were. And it doesn't quite work when you've got tyres that are like four times the size of what they used to be. <laughs> Alright, so we beat Gasly out. What is the gap to Vettel?
Ah, oh, come on. Don't quite have the same front bite as what I did on the Ultrasofts. Yeah, pull away from Gasly, something crazy. Problem is we're not catching Vettel, so we're sort of just stuck in our own little race right now. Let's just save a little bit of fuel for the next five or so laps. I could really use this safety car right about now. Bunch us all back up again. Oh my god, how many times am I going to do that? Bruh! Thank God they brought in the Hypersoft for this year because this one stop race stuff is pretty boring. Nice little Sunday drive around the streets of Monaco on F1 2017. I don't even know who's in the lead. I think it's Ricardo. hoping that in the next 26 laps at least one of the top three goes and fences it or has an engine issue. <laughs> it's the only way we're going to grab a podium today. Oh. Mind you, if there's anyone that's going to fence it, it's most likely going to be me. I haven't saved enough fuel. Oh, what am I 
not doing. Actually, you know what, I think, I actually take back what I said, I think it's Bottas in the lead. Well, we really are streaming away from Gasly.
Alrighty, eight laps to go. Still just trudling on. Oh, Jesus, that's why you shift down to the second there. Thirty seconds now on Gasly, so if the safety car were to come out, could possibly jump in and get some ultra softs. even make it round that corner. Rear's got plenty of grip, but the front seemed to have no grip at all. Drifting it through there.
much curb. Ah, too much wall. Come on. Four laps to go, just survive. Those poor rear tyres. Oh, Jesus Christ. Do not touch that curb. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me. Alright, come on, two laps to go. Let's just finish this thing. Has car stopped. I was praying that was one of the leaders there for a sec. <laughs> it's just a Renault. Alright, last lap. Oh, it's Raikkonen in the lead. Wait, so where's Bottas? And why is Hamilton now in third? I'm so confused.
Okay, that was a bit of a interesting move to make on the last lap. Oh, come on, make it through. Alright, last corner. Fourth in Monaco, wow. I'll take that. Unfortunately, it wasn't our, in our career mode, but... Wow. What a race. Man, that was long. Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. Tell me, Ant, what was the key to this success? It was a question of the right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands, and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari, on the top step once more. Moving on to the driver of the day then, Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? Difficult call Crofty, but I'd like to say Sergio Perez. He's just so gifted at getting the most out of his tyres, and he showed that here today. That's it for today's Grand Prix, and from Ant and I, it's goodbye, and see you again next time. Well, wow, okay, so Raikkonen ended up lapping everyone up until fifth. I don't know quite how that worked, but it's a Ferrari 1-2. Where did Bottas go? Well, Ricardo and Verstappen were down the back, and Bottas down in 15th, so they must have been involved in that first lap skirmish, although I swear Bottas started second. Anyway, we'll go and have a look at the replay and see what exactly happened. So initially we got an incredible getaway, I'm not quite sure how. We got sort of linked or locked with the Haas, and then, well that's how Ricardo got his damage. And then immediately there was a safety car, so I'm not quite sure how that happened. Just go through the field, see if anyone's dead. Huh? No, maybe not. Well, okay, so Bottas must have just got filtered out because at that point he's in the lead and Raikkonen I think is in second and then we just got stuck behind the Haas for the next 20 laps or something ridiculous until we <laughs> ended up booting him out of the way but anyway go back and have a look at it again so he is on board with Grosjean <laughs> wow. Typical Grosjean style. At least the we know this mod's ultra realistic. But yeah, anyway. To be honest, I probably should have given more room. I didn't realise he was on my inside, but for the most part, really fun race at the start. It was a bit boring throughout the middle, I know, but that is Monaco at times, especially on these sort of one stop races, there's really not much action that goes on, but Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next race in Montreal, where hopefully we'll be back on our career mode with no issues with the recording. And until then, I'll catch you guys later.